The Hobbit, an unexpected journey. I'm sure many of you were ready for this when the lights went up at the end of The Return of the King. More precious, sleepy eyes. Nine years ago, Peter Jackson's original Lord of the Rings trilogy made household names out of the likes of Viggo Mortensen and Orlando Bloom. And we can likely expect the same for Richard Armitage, a.k.a. Thorin Oakenshield. He's in the new Hobbit film. My kin, may it serve you well. But let's leave Middle Earth for just a moment and talk about Destiny. Growing up in England's East Midlands, Richard's favorite book, The Hobbit. One of his first acting roles as a kid in The Hobbit. So when Peter Jackson came calling, the actor known for playing heavies, a henchman in Robin Hood and a Nazi agent in Captain America, he picked himself off the floor and steadied himself to play a hero. Got the ropes! Here's one from Richard Edmonds! Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Excellent. Excellent. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Very excited to see you. I mean, the, the, the Hobbit premiere in New Zealand, those numbers are... I know, I'm glad you got the numbers, because I was trying to work it out this morning, and I think I'd said something like two billion people turned up, but it, it did feel like <laughs> quite a lot of people. We can just go back in time, and I'll say two billion, <laughs> no. if you prefer. There's a lot, there's a lot. I mean, it was pretty much, pretty much the entire town turned out, and Neil Finn played a set at, at the Embassy Theatre, and... A Boeing 747 flew over, flew over the carpet with our faces painted all over the plane. So it was a pretty good day, yeah. I'm assuming you read it when you were a kid. Yeah, like yeah. I was, um, I was a big fan. I read it when I was 11. And then I was in a stage production uh, when I was about 13, and I played an elf. Um, <laughs> and I was dressed in, in sort of wool that, would, that had been sprayed to look like chain mail, and uh, Gollum was paper. And the dragon was like a, a red light with smoke because they didn't have enough money. So uh, <laughs> coming back to it uh, a few years later, it was pretty much identical to that production. I think so. Yeah. I think so. But except now, instead of being an elf, you have a guy that's got the longest grudge ever with an elf. And the longest hair ever. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? It's, uh, it's a long sort of process of, of uh, hatred towards the elves and... Uh, you know, Tolkien wrote the dwarves as a very kind of forbidden race. They were suppressed and they have a secret language and they sort of bury themselves underground. So when they finally emerge, there's a, there's, they've got a lot of agenda going on. What, was he, what, do you, what do you think he was trying to get across? It's interesting. I think he was... I think there was something in what he did which is talking about the Jewish race. You know, the whole idea of uh, a, a, a kind of race of people that are in exile trying to find their way home i think there's there's a, just a, just a hint of that without taking it too seriously it's me too right he had written this book relatively long after the end of the first world war but when he was writing it hitler was becoming hitler in germany so this was in the era no one knew hitler was going to be the guy he was but he the rise was there yeah and also you know um i think a lot of what tolkien wrote was inspired by his own experiences in world war one and the battle of the somme and he lost very very close friends so the idea um of the small man stepping out of his front door and being asked to to go into great danger and and uh fight is pretty much what the hobbit's about really that's what bilbo baggins goes through and you know tolkien was a devout christian he was he was a uh, a, a Catholic and I think that just as again there's a flavor of Christianity that comes through his writing there's the idea of chivalry and nobility expressed through kindness and mercy which pervades all of his work but also and this was absolutely Catholic and there is a redemption story except it's hard fought yeah it really is harder than most people think to get yourself to that right place yeah and actually for Thorin as well it's a it's very much a journey where he has a thread of corruption in him that he knows about greed. Yeah. I mean, could there be anything more relevant at the moment of the corruption of greed? And he knows it exists in him. And he's, you know, he, his grandparents suffered this terrible dragon sickness. So, God, it's sounding really serious, isn't it? It's actually, <laughs> it's actually a really fun movie. It's yes. about dwarves <laughs> drinking a, and it's telling... It's a lot of bare feet <laughs> flopping around and throwing yeah. food at each other. It's, it's definitely a food fight. Let's play a clip, a nice ceremonial clip here. Yeah. My name's Richard, I'm from London, England. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
important ceremony, wasn't it? That's not, that's not the film, though. No, no, no. That's actually what that's, the movie looks that's like. The movie. That's it's great, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to wow you. That's an important ceremony for the film, right? I actually used that Maori as a daily preparation for the role because there was something about the, the way that the Maori warrior prepares himself for battle that I really wanted to use for Thorin. But that was the blessing of the soundstage. It was our first day on set, and they sang this incredible song, and they raised the door of the soundstage as the sun rose. And the sun kind of made its way up the wall of the soundstage, and I, I knew that we were going to have a great time filming. It was incredibly moving. It's nice to add that layer to your life, isn't it? The one where you just make it, it's not as much about you, but you can extend to some kind of spirituality or some kind of connection. I mean, I have to be honest, it comes from the leader, and the leader is Peter. And Peter inspires that kind of loyalty. And it was evident in the amount of people that came back to work on The Hobbit from The Lord of the Rings. Um, and I, I actually stole a little gem of that from him for my character because I, I wanted Thorin to lead with that quiet authority. I wanted him to inspire loyalty rather than command it. And that's exactly how Peter Jackson works. We like our heroes to be really flawed now. It used to be we like them to be a little flawed. Yeah. Where are we now? Are we, 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 the good guy. What is the good guy anymore? Well, I guess when you play the good guy, you just have to look for the, the, you know, the flaws in him. And likewise, with a bad character, you have to look for the goodness in him. And th that's what's always inspired me about any role I play, is looking for those complexities and the paradoxes. Mm -hmm. And, the th and you know, when I was working on Thorin, it kind of happened by accident that I, in order to create a voice for him, I was using pieces of Shakespeare, and I ended up finding bits of Henry V, bits of Richard III, and bits of um, Macbeth, all of which seem to work for the, for the idea of this character that has, a, has a, a goal, has a real ambition. But at the door to that mountain, inside that mountain, is the most terrible horror he can possibly imagine, that the dragon. He's leading his people there. He's leading his own nephews to that place. And inside of the mountain is all of that gold. And he knows that he has the potential to be corrupted by that gold and, and you know, take on the dragon sickness. So it's a very kind of complicated uh, journey that he goes on. You, you, your character, obviously, you, you take a lot of... Like, take it seriously what Gandalf says to you, right? Yeah. Well, maybe the only one, so maybe I should ask yeah, it. Let's see. Like wear it with the Gandalf okay. hat just to make sure that you answer this question honestly. Anybody else got a Gandalf hat? Anybody else got a Gandalf hat? <laughs> Never, oh, they all do. <laughs> I love okay. it. Okay. So, there's a, a couple of wizards uh, in this particular film, right? There's a lot of magic in <laughs> this room. <laughs> That's weird. Super weird. <laughs> Super weird. Gandalf and, and Radagast. Yeah. Uh, one smokes what appears to be a lot of weed in this yeah. film. He's not the only one. Right. Well, the other one's taking so many mushrooms, his yeah. brain is fried. Yeah. So, are these two wizards the Snoop Dogg and Dre of Middle Earth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just don't create the same kind of music. For me. <laughs> so, uh, the, 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 the drug reference is actually kind of funny in this one. Yeah. Yeah, we, we shouldn't really I'm talk about that. I'm wearing, I'm wearing the hat. Is it 8 o'clock at night? We Dude, can talk I'm wearing about the hat. That. You have to answer honestly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dwarves make their own moonshine. That's one thing that we definitely discussed. <laughs> um, but yeah, there are, there are um, references to smoking a little bit of uh, naughty grass. Keep it together. Yeah. It, the idea of your career is it's, it's taken a, another direction. This is a, a fan video that was made for you that I'm curious to put your response to this. Individual moments, right? All right? Let's put your mic back on here. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> yes. Look, when you don't talk about the speedos. No. <laughs> at some point, are you at that stage of your career where you can look at wardrobe and go, eh, "I'm not wearing that." Um, yeah, I mean, I try to not be too vain about it, but um, yeah, I do. I do sort of have a little bit of say. No. It's an odd place to be, though, because obviously the, all those scenes edited together by fans, it's, it's nice yeah. in a way that they're liking you for whatever reason they're liking you, but it's still a, it's a different reality that you're in now, because when, you, when you're, you, you're in, on stage, if you're in a Macbeth or a Hamlet, you're not thinking about this part of the life, are you? The, no, that's true. And actually, when, I mean, they talk about film being for life, and that's why they say it. Um, 
but you know you've got to just you do what you do and you embrace it and uh, I all of those kind of videos and uh, all that fan appreciation it's like they they're the people that buy the tickets so you know I'm I welcome it so good to see you man thanks for you coming too. I appreciate it what's your everybody the Hobbit is called an unexpected journey obviously December 14th we'll be right back